Hello everybody. This has been an astonishingly creative time. These last few months have taken us to places despite the fact that we've been prevented from going places. We've had to adopt and adapt and improve. That's somebody's motto, isn't it? I can't quite remember whose. But we've found ourselves immersed in a creativity which faith sees as God's gift to us, his church. And in all of this, we found ourselves reconciling opposites. We found ourselves reconciling our, at times it's felt like, captivity behind our own front doors. And we found ourselves also propelled out into a virtual world, many of us, that is still challenging. We're still trying to master. And yet we feel so much more at home in it. We feel that virtual meetings have a reality that somehow we're beginning to understand. And perhaps again, it's this combination of the experience of meeting with our families in ways that couldn't be more real, that spills over into the reality of virtual worship, which mirrors the deep and profound reality of our oneness in Christ, the Christ who fills all space and time, the God in whose hands all space and time are. And nothing, nothing could ameliorate the horribleness of this pandemic. It's spurious to say good things have come out of it. These things are a response. They're to do with healing reactions to hurt. And yet we do find ourselves looking back over the gifts we've been given to see us through this wilderness. And as I say, many of these gifts we experience in contradiction. I find myself very drawn to the story of that fish supper, the first Easter evening, as Luke tells it. So many commonalities between Luke's telling of the story and its themes of doubt and incredulity and the way John tells these things. But in John, of course, it's focused around Thomas. And they come at the same truth from radically different angles. They come to the mystery of resurrection, and to a life which is unimaginably fuller, as Paul says, comparable to the life of a seed, a tiny shriveled life which appears to issue in death, but out of which a life blossoms, which from the original perspective, you couldn't possibly have imagined. And this life fills the room where the disciples are and asks for a piece of that fish supper. And so we come to our prayers and we'll begin with the reading. <clears throat> While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened and why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, see that it is I myself. Touch and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. While he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Let us pray. The closed the doors, the reassuring walls, the bounded space, these we confess, God of boundless love, defined us too greatly before ever we heard of COVID. And now, what has shut us in has driven us out, out into the world in ways we could not have imagined. The things that defined us now define nothing, for you are remaking your church again. Yet you made us flesh and blood. There are things that define us, embodied physical beings, soul and, souls and flesh. This is the real life which defines us. To take the bread, pass the cup, shake a hand at the door of the kirk, these simple holy things remind us in the very house of God of who we are. We are human. Suddenly, that first Easter evening, he was with them. He came among them and astonished them and they were filled with fear they thought him a ghost, a dilution of life almost to vanishing. What could they imagine but the death would diminish life? They thought they contemplated 
death escaped. Not death broken, its power destroyed. How could they know that he who died our death lived now and lives for all eternity in the fullness of life which destroys death? He took a piece of fish, he ate, he partook of what they were eating. Their communion was real, tangible, material, just as it had been when he took the bread and then the cup, just as it is when we do these things as a memorial of him. You call us, your church, to witness to life in its fullness. You call us to physical community, a community the pandemic has denied us for so long and which now, tentatively, we are beginning to recover. Teach us the preciousness of our physical communion, still denied us in its fullness and for which we yearn. But you also call us to witness to that life which in its fullness cannot be confined, kept out or kept in by doors and walls. They had thought themselves safe, those first disciples, that first evening of Easter. Behind walls and closed doors. And so have we. Remind us that he whom walls and doors could not keep out would send his Pentecostal spirit to drive his church out beyond the consoling walls and into the world for which he died. Teach us to understand how we too now are being driven out beyond our comfortable walls and consoling doors to witness to the world. Help us to learn the lessons of this long year, the better to be your church. We rehearse these things before you, you who know all things, that we may better be led by your spirit to understand better where you call us to go and what you call us to be as your church in Argyle. The closed doors, the reassuring walls, the bounded space. These we confess, God of boundless love, defined us too greatly before ever we heard of COVID. But now what has shut us in has driven us out, out into the world in ways we could not have imagined. Help us to grasp that you are making your church again. Remake us then, Lord, as we return to a church life more like that which we knew. Prevent us from returning to the limitations we told in that life. Remake us in relevance to our communities in whose midst we are a physical presence, but also the promise of communion and acceptance, of peace such as the world cannot give, the life which has destroyed the power of death, the love which accepts us and all that we are. We pray for each other, our congregations and our communities. We pray for the needs we know, the real needs of real people, spiritual, embodied, living in a physical universe, this world we share with them. And as Jesus taught us, so together we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Between now and next week, I'll have had the joy of presiding at Dorothy Wallace's ordination in, in Vereri. <coughs> Excuse me. I find myself anticipating this tremendously, and I'm sure our prayers are all with Dorothy and her congregation as this great day approaches. And so, into a week which holds who knows what, or quite literally, God knows what, we go forth to be surprised and drawn out to ourselves, to be more fully God's people, Christ's folk in Jesus' world. And so the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
be with you now and evermore. Amen. We'll say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and evermore. Amen. And every blessing for this week. And of course, beyond, but God willing, we'll be together virtually next week as well. Bye for now.